you want to write a program to reverse a string using recursion. What I will do is, let us assume this is a string A, B, C, D. You want to reverse it. See, reversing means last character should come first. So obviously don't you think you must have a reference or, uh, or somewhere where, from where you can start from the end of the string. You must always begin from the end of the string if you're doing uh, reversing. So what I will do is, I'll write a function to which I will pass my string and I will also have another variable, let us assume i, which is going to have the last index or the index of the last element in the string. And what is the index of the last element? I'll call this as yes. Index of the last element is nothing but 3. But before that, don't you think strings are immutable in Java? They are immutable. If they are immutable, don't you think you can't modify this string? You have to have another string. So to reverse the string, I'm going to have an empty string called as R. Yes is the string which is passed. R is the empty string. Next thing is, I will also have i, which will always have the index of the last character, in this case, which is nothing but 3. How to give that, we will see. Now, now, it's very simple. How I will be uh, recursively solving this is very simple, guys. Right now, my string is a, b, c, d. What I would like to do is, when I call this function again, initially string is yes. A empty string is R, but I would like to take the character present at the ith position, concatenate it with R, concatenate it with R, and then when I'm calling the string again, this string is immutable, so I have to pass the same string only. But what I will do is, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, look at the complete string. I want to look at only the string minus the last character, which means A, B, C, D if I have. Now I want to think the string as A, B, C. But I cannot remove the last character. All that is not possible. You cannot remove the last character. But I can move one position behind. I is now at D, but I can move to C. Would you agree with me? So see, this is what I'm showing you. I is now at the last character. What I will do is, I will again call the same function. I will pass the same string yes, but while passing what I will do is, in the previous call, I was at the last character, I will take the last character, the element present at the last character, concatenate it to R. And then I value which was 3, in the second call I will subtract 1 and send. So it becomes 2, see here, it became 2. Any confusion till this point of time guys, whatever I spoke, is it crystal clear to all of you? Yes sir, next what you might ask. Next what means, again same thing, I'll again call this. When I call, string is the same, but in the previous call, I was at the second character. Whichever character I is at, I will concatenate it to R. So R was D, when I concatenate to it, it will become DC. And then I value, I will reduce, I was 2 here, I will reduce and send, so I will become 1. Any confusion till this point of time? Then what happens is, I will again call the same function. When I again call the same function, this time string is the same. But I will concatenate whatever is there at the ith position, reduce the value of i and send. So i was 1 here, in the, in the next call it should become 0. See, it became 0. Again, what I will do is, I will again call this. This time, I, I mean obviously, i became 0, so I am moving it here, right? Now, again if I call this, then what will happen is, whatever is the character at the ith position, concatenate it with R and send it. So R will become D, C, D, A. Then what will happen is, I value you have to always reduce. Here it is 0. If I subtract 1 and send, I is going to become minus 1. If I becomes minus 1, it comes out of the string. It comes out of the string. If it comes out of the string, now there is no more point in continuing. Which means, don't you think I have hit the base? This is only my base condition. And how will you define the base condition? Base condition, is it defined using yes? Is it defined using R or is it defined using I? Put it in the chat if you have understood. How can I define the base condition? Using yes, R or I? Absolutely. And what is the base condition? The moment I goes out of the last, uh, first index. First index is 0, which means don't you think if I can, I can write, if i becomes less than 0, then 
I have hit my base condition. Now, if I hit my base condition, what should I do? What I should do is see R is the reverse string as it is rever uh, send that reverse string, return that reverse string. I hope I am clear. So, I will return R. That is what I will return. Same R, even this fellow will return. Same R, even this fellow will return. Same R, even this fellow will return. So, that is what I am also showing you. Same R will be returned. And ultimately, what this will get is that reverse string, which is VCBA, and that is your answer. Now, if this was asked in any of the companies which uh, you have attended, maybe if you knew the solution, you could have written it. And imagine to the interviewer, if you would have traced like this and shown, you would have immediately selected you. At least I would have selected you. But I am not the interviewer, so I will not select you. Okay. Anyways, now uh, let us uh, go and um, write the code here. So, I will minimize this also and keep some of digits. <coughs> Remove these uh, 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 these lines except for scanner. Last two lines you remove. Yeah. Now I will go there and I'm going to create static. What this has to return is a string. So string, and uh, it's a reverse string is the name of the function. Also, maybe if you want to see how what is the recurrence relationship here? Okay. Have you defined it here? The recurrence relationship in this. Uh, just check. So, see here, if you want the reverse string, where you will pass yes, r and i. Yes is the string, r is the empty string, i is the index of the last character. So, before that, I should first call reverse string, pass the same string yes, but to r, concatenate the character present at the ith position and then decrement the value of i by 1. I hope you are able to think and see that is what I am also going to write here. If I go here, I am going to tell uh, so string uh, yes and then uh, string r which is an empty string and then I int i. So, inside this I will come first my base condition if in case i value becomes less than 0 then it has gone out return what to return if it becomes less than 0 see r it would have be, had the reverse string so return r okay then i will come here and uh, next uh, what i am going to do is of course here then comes the recursive relationship so i will tell return and uh, what to return what to return is call reverse string again recursively this time yes is the same remove that all that reverse string Inside that, as it is yes, I will send because it is immutable. But to R the next time, I do not want to send the same R. See, I want to concatenate the character present at the ith position and send it to R. So, see, R plus concatenation means plus character at the ith position. How? Yes dot character because you know direct access is not there. Yes dot character at the ith position, comma i value will initially be at the last index. Now, I have to bring it one step back. So, I will tell i minus 1 like this. I hope you are able to think. Any confusion? So, if i is 3, it will become 2. If i is 2, it will become 1. I hope till here, whatever I spoke is clear to each and every one of you. Now, let us go down. And here, I will just take a string. So, I will just tell scan dot next. And that I will store it in a variable called as yes. Now, see how I will call system.out.println uh, and here I will tell, I will call reverse string. When I call reverse string, do not just type it, I will call reverse string and uh, in reverse string, I, inside this, what I am going to do is, I will pass yes. I will pass yes, that is my string, comma. Now, the initially what should be the r value it should be an empty string correct empty string how will you pass simple open double quote close double quote that's it that is empty string even if you leave a space it is not empty remember comma i value should be the index of the last character how will you get the index of the last character simple yes dot length if i tell i will get the length of the string if the length of the string is 4, last index will be 3, so minus 1. How many of you understood this properly? Put a yes in the chat if you understood this properly. 
Beautiful. Good, good that if you have understood, I am very happy with you. Now let us go and execute it and see whether it will work. Okay, so um, if I execute it, cool. So now the string, maybe I will tell LMNOP. Uh, if in case I press enter, you can see PON ML. It works. It works with perfection. So I hope reversing the string is also clear. But if I re-execute that program once more, watch it. Huh. Now I will just re-execute it. This time I will put MADAM. If I press enter, oh, it didn't reverse. Same thing I have got. Can someone tell me why I got the same thing? Who can tell me? Did it reverse or did it not reverse? Good, good. 100% this is a palindrome. Why I purposely gave a palindrome as input is, because the next program, which I am going to give you two minutes time to think about and provide a solution is to write a recursive pro program which can check if a string is a palindrome or not. Take two minutes time, think about it and I will come back and give you the solution. 